Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lexi D here. Welcome back to Something to Consider. In this episode, I wanted to walk you all through my experiences of embracing the word assertive for the year of 2022. So how I went about choosing this word was actually in December of 2021, I finished reading a book by Nedra entitled Set Boundaries, Find Peace. And in that book, she describes our approach to setting, our potential approaches to setting boundaries, and she categorizes it in four ways. She says that we can be passive, we can be passive aggressive, we can be assertive, or we can be aggressive. And she also illustrates that it could be a matter of who we're talking to, of the approach that we take of the mood that we're in, perhaps, of the history that we have with the person. So it's not like we take one stance and we apply that to all areas of our life. Now, from what I took away from her book and from that section in particular was that I wanted to focus on being assertive. And this wasn't just limited to my boundaries. It was in my life. I had found that there were some areas where I was having trouble articulating myself and I would either result in being passive, so not saying anything at all, or maybe being a bit aggressive in which I wasn't necessarily yelling and being outright aggressive, but I'd like to think of aggressive in the sense that I was taking it of just kind of being inconsiderate of others needs and really focusing on my own. So the way that I interpret the term of being assertive is a balance in between being considerate of others needs, but also speaking up for yours. And it really does require you to pause, to be disciplined about doing that. And frankly, there are times where it sometimes feels easier to just be aggressive, meaning to just care only about yourself or to just shut down and be passive. And so I wanted to challenge myself to instead of moving to either of these options to really embrace what it meant to be assertive. And what I find is that when I choose a word for the year, what happens is God gives me an opportunity to show up and embrace that word. So you best believe I have some examples to share with you all of where I have had to be assertive in my life. So the first one is addressing my boss's tone of feedback. And I'm going to get into detail with each one of these points here. So I have witnessed a pattern in my boss and my manager in which he gives feedback as he should, as every manager should. But for some reason, the way in which he was giving me feedback rubbed me the wrong way. I just found that I would walk away oftentimes from his feedback feeling a bit flustered, frustrated and not really knowing how to kind of proceed next. And that led to a lot of anxiety that I had when it would come time to getting his feedback. And so I had had a few conversations with him regarding this and I kind of tiptoed and danced around it and was more so passive, but it got to a point where I was dreading interactions with him. And I knew at that point that I was either going to have to frankly find another job or I was going to have to deal with it. And you best believe, I don't know where you best believe is coming from. This is like a new phrase. Like what, side note, y'all, I listen back to these recordings sometimes and then I hear certain phrases or things that I do over and over and over. And I'm like, what is going on there? Where did that come from? Anyways, So he's had this pattern and I've witnessed this. And at some point I decided, you know what? I'm just going to take my services elsewhere. (laughs) I'm going to apply to other jobs. I can't deal with this. I don't want, I do not want to deal with this any longer. God had a different plan for me because as many jobs as I applied to, I was not hearing back or I was getting rejections. And so I took that as a sign that I needed to address and confront the situation head on and to be assertive. And so I did, I did just that. I set aside time with my boss to talk with him. And I even wrote myself a little script. Um, 
I went over the script actually with one of my close friends who also is a manager. I wanted, she's not a manager at the same company that I'm at, but I just wanted to get some insight into how I could effectively do this. And obviously that was just going to be her one opinion, but it just, it helped me to at least have someone to bounce ideas off of. So I came into that conversation thinking I was going to say one thing. And once it came time to speak to him, I ended up saying something kind of differently. So there was a few things from the script I pulled from, but essentially I spoke from the heart and I shared with him like, hey, you know how much I care about my work and how much pride I take in it. And at the same time, I am witnessing this pattern and this is how this makes me feel. And it was actually not as hard of a conversation as I thought it might be. He took it pretty well and he responded in saying that he was going to work on it and he acknowledged that it is something for him to work on. And I feel like that was the best outcome of that conversation. And then on top of that, I noticed in the time that has passed that he has made a shift. And then in addition to that, he added context as to why he would respond and give feedback using a certain tone and just how much pressure he was under. Not as a way, I didn't take it as a way to make an excuse. I took it as a way to add more context because for me, what was also happening in the background that he wasn't privy to when I shared this in my previous episode is that I have had a... I have the trauma of having been fired from a former job. And so this job was the one right after that. And so I had been quite sensitive to anything that felt like I wasn't meeting expectations. And so I spent a great deal of time trying to first filter through that and understand if I was projecting my trauma and being triggered onto the situation and trying to see if if how he was giving feedback was actually an issue for me or if it was something that I was just misinterpreting. And so that is why initially when I was addressing him, I, in my previous conversations, was taking a passive approach, but I knew once it get to, got to a point where I was looking for other jobs and that wasn't working out, that it was a clear indicator that this was an opportunity for me to be assertive and I'm glad that it worked out. The next scenario was having a family member who was being critical of me. So this family member is quite close to me and it's someone who I respect and I look up to. And I noticed in a few of our conversations about a particular topic, there would be certain things I would share to them and I didn't like their critiques. I I think it's perfectly okay and acceptable to have a different opinion, but the way in which he would critique me, I didn't like it. And I remember there was one moment in particular that sticks out to me where I was sitting with the situation. I just was like, this is becoming a buildup and I need to address this. So I addressed it with him. I asked him for some time to talk and we talked about it. And this time around, things didn't go well. (laughs) He was not really receptive to what I had to say. He got on the defense and... It went left so much that here's the the other thing is the conversation was really quick and short. I think it was under 10 minutes and it just escalated very quickly. And after that conversation ended, I remember writing this person an email and eventually we resolved it, but it was a learning lesson or a reminder that even when you come to certain situations and you are doing your best to be assertive, to also consider this person's needs, you don't have any control over their response. That That is, and I think that's the part, I, I know that's the part that has caused me to be 
passive in some areas in the past or in some conversations is because you don't, I haven't wanted to ruffle feathers and potentially turn something into a situation. But since I have embraced this word, I've also put myself at risk of dealing with that. And I'm thankful that things did get resolved with this person, but it also was just a reminder to brace myself for sometimes there being adverse reactions to to what I have to say. Now, this next one centers around friendship, where a close friend of mine, I noticed that there began to be a gap between us. I felt like there were there was distance that was creeping in between us. And I found myself feeling annoyed with hanging around her. And it got to a point where I just didn't want to be around her anymore. And I couldn't pinpoint exactly what it was. It wasn't anything obvious. This person wasn't being inflammatory to me or to other people around them. But really what it came down to, cutting to the chase, is that I felt like they were not being vulnerable and they weren't being open. Now, when I think back to our initial interaction as friends, this is exactly how this person came across to me as someone who was kind of guarded and closed off. And I think just as a matter of circumstance and situation and what I found was that we were hanging out as a way of, what is the word I'm looking for? Convenience. It was very convenient to hang out with them and to go places with them because we did share, we did share quite a bit of values and, and interests. But over the years, as I've started to unveil more of myself to myself, I desire that out of the people around me. And so I didn't know what was happening at the time as I was going to therapy, becoming closer to God, and it's led me to value vulnerability. And I've I've shared this in a previous episode where I talked about what having 20-year friendships has taught me. And one of those things has been vulnerability. And so in my interactions with this person, I found that I would come away from our hangouts exhausted, irritated, and feeling like I got nothing from it and not got nothing from it as if this person needs to do something from me. But in my, in my interactions with people, I want to know more about what's going on with them. And it's not like I need to know every single detail. I'm not here to be in your business or to stir drama, but I want to know how you're feeling. And I used to feel like this person was showing up with a mask and it was exhausting to me to try to get around that mask when it felt like this person was not willing to just leave it, right? Was not willing to let go of a certain perception that they were putting out there. And I remember having one conversation Usually my approach when I notice something in someone that, how do I put this? Because I don't want to sound like I'm high and mighty or like I'm above people. When I notice something that could be considered for growth, maybe I'll say it that way. I will usually bring it to their attention in as much as Hey, I've noticed this. Have you noticed this? And if they tell me they haven't noticed it, then in the past, I've just kind of dropped it and said, all right, I'm going to adjust my expectations of this person. Maybe adjust my interactions, depending on what that thing is and how strongly I feel about it. And I do feel strongly about vulnerability. So I approached this very similarly with this person. I had the conversation with them and I asked them, do you feel like you're open? I don't remember exactly what I said, but that was the gist of it. And they didn't feel like it was an issue. So I dropped it. My initial plan was to just kind of step away from the friendship a bit and just let it fade. I don't 
really like to explicitly end friendships unless something really inflammatory has happened and nothing inflammatory happened. It just, I felt like I had outgrown the friendship at that point. But when I started to notice that they were reaching out more consistently, I felt like, you know what? All right, I have to drop, I have to address this head on because I'm not going to keep dodging this person. I'm not going to lie to this person. And to be fair, my dodging this person was just maybe being invited out and I didn't want to go. So I just would share, nah, I'm not into that. So it's not like I was lying to this person and doing all that kind of stuff, but I knew that I was finding myself explicitly backing away and I did not want it to be, hmm, I wanted it to be a situation where I was showing respect to the friendship and I felt like this is the point in which I need to have another conversation and I need to not really dance around it and just be really straightforward about what I'm feeling. And I did that. I talked to this person and I, I shared with them where I was coming f- coming from. I shared with them that I felt disconnected from them and I wanted to have a connection with them where we could go beyond the surface and we could talk more beyond things that we could get into our feelings about things and not just kind of the tactical day-to-day approach. And I wanted to be able to have a friendship where I could hopefully create a space where both of us could just lay down the masks that we have to put on. Because to be fair with this person and with all of us, when we go out in the world, there are certain masks that we put on. We put on a certain mask at work, We have different masks, maybe with family members, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing, I think, but I think when it goes in in its extreme form, it becomes a way to protect ourselves. It becomes a way to guard ourselves, and maybe maybe that's necessary in some instances, but I would like to think that if we're going to be, if I'm going to be friends with you, you don't need to feel guarded with me. Now, again, this doesn't mean that you need to tell me everything. I'm not expecting that. But when it's just kind of feeling like we're talking about the weather and there's nothing that's really sticking out, like then to me, we have a we have a problem. We have an issue. And I'm grateful that this person was receptive to what I was saying, because even as I'm telling this, you, you can hopefully tell I try to be sensitive to the fact that there may be things that I'm observing and wanting out of someone that they may not want for themselves. And so in choosing to be assertive, it has caused me to be mindful of the words I choose, of how I approach situations. There's been in a lot of these situations where I've shared to someone, hey, I have something important to share with you, but it's not urgent. Because I wanted to be intentional about giving them the space to decide for themselves when they could be available to hear me out for something important. And so in being assertive in these situations, it's really caused me to think more about what it is I want to say, but behind that thinking more about how I'm actually feeling. And quite frankly, y'all, sometimes that's a lot of work and it can be really exhausting (laughs) can be really exhausting sometimes you would just rather just be like listen I don't feel like it right now and granted sometimes I did sometimes I was a little bit passive until it got to a point where it was like okay enough is enough so those were a couple of situations there definitely were more but just wanted to give you all a few that came to mind of scenarios in which I, you'll notice I'm choosing this language carefully. I was given the opportunity to be assertive as opposed to saying I, I was <laughs> I was forced to face this situation and make a decision. I was given the opportunity of being assertive. And I definitely think that it's it's helped me to be a better communicator 
to hopefully show up as a more authentic version of myself to to bring myself to being a better person. Being assertive is not for the faint of heart. It will require discipline and a level of self-awareness that I I did not know I was going to need <laughs> to have some of these conversations. But it's definitely something that I would say was worth it. And I've learned a lot from embracing that word for the year and plan to continue to apply it to my life. So something for you all to consider is maybe a few things. Do you have a word for the year? If you don't have a word for the year, maybe consider having one. Or having something that will pull you towards a better version of yourself. In as much as of of being assertive, consider the areas in your life where you haven't been assertive. Where maybe you've been dodging the situation by being passive, by being passive aggressive, or by being aggressive. Take some inventory, take some time to look at situations, to see where it is you've been triggered and how you've responded to those things. Those can give you an indicator as well in terms of where you will have opportunities to be assertive. So with all that being said, I want to thank you all for giving this a listen. If you like these podcasts, please do rate on Apple Podcasts. I'm not sure if you can rate on Spotify, but if you can rate on Spotify, please do that as well. If you are listening on YouTube, please give this a thumbs up and I will speak with you all in my next episode.